Hi guys, this video is about the deconstruct and design task in stage 2 physics but it also applies to stage 2 chemistry and stage 2 biology and in the near future stage 2 psychology. So uh, SACE have um, made it compulsory to do a deconstruct and design task for a very good reason. That reason being it shows uh, gives students a chance to show that they can in fact uh, break down a problem into component parts based on the subject outline but also design some sort of effective and useful methodology that may be able to be used to solve part of that problem or solve that entire problem. So an example of one of these deconstruct and design tasks is this one that I created several years ago. Uh, it's loosely based on the snow globe task that is on the SACE website for stage two physics. And I designed this one because I think it gives my students a really good opportunity to show um, KA1, which is a uh, depth and breadth of understanding of a range of concepts uh, based on the propulsion system and how the propulsion systems work and other sorts of factors that may affect the flight. So <clears throat> in order to um, get an A on this task or an A plus on this task, as many of my students have done in the past, they need to effectively deconstruct a problem and design a methodology. So designing a methodology doesn't just mean here's the method, it is also here's the equipment to be used, here's how it's going to be used, here's how the data can be collected, here's what a table of data might look like, and here's the relationship under investigation. So it's not just here's the method, step one, two, three, four, it is here's step one, and this is the reason for that, method, uh, for that step, whether it be for safety purposes, efficiency purposes, or to reduce the impact of random and or systematic errors and what that might actually do to the data. So um, here's some uh, examples that I prompt students with. So you may wish to consider, for example, uh, affecting the lift capacity, minimum, maximum size of the motors, how many, uh, the shape and size of the drone itself, um, the aerodynamic profile, um, and then we flesh out more and more and more based on uh, the content that we've covered in class up until that point. So I tend to give my students the deconstruct and design task in mid term three, uh, because by then I've covered all of the motion in physics and I've covered uh, all of the fields in physics and I've introduced and covered most of the light and matter in physics, which means that I've opened up the entirety of my course almost to students to be able to use um, whatever ideas they want in order to break down the problem and then develop a way to solve part of that problem. So uh, the performance standards that I assess include these. I should actually add a KA1 here. So critically deconstructs a problem and designs a logical, coherent and detailed investigation. This is probably the key one. Uh, critically and logically evaluates procedures and an effect on data. This is also quite important. And I give them um, an opportunity to apply physics concepts highly effectively in new and familiar contexts. So a, a new context is this drone delivery system and I'm able to give them a chance to show off how much they know about the course and uh, how well they know it I guess. So in terms of critically deconstructing a problem it doesn't just mean um, brainstorming. So brainstorming is brainstorming. Brainstorming is probably I consider it to be you know in the C level um, and mostly because lots of students across all year levels can you know just throw some ideas out there that might stick and might be related to the content. Critically deconstructing a problem however means that those ideas are considered, those ideas are justified, those ideas are also related back to the subject outline and the dot points on the left hand side. If you teach SACE you should know what I mean. Designing a logical coherent and detailed investigation. So a logical investigation means that the problem that you're trying to solve, so in my case here, designing a drone delivery system or investigating factors that might make it more efficient, um, it means that the idea that the students have chosen to go ahead with will in fact answer that problem or solve part of that problem or give an answer to um, how to make the drone more efficient or effective at what it's doing. So it's actually going to be a prac that is going to be uh, beneficial in the long run. Coherent. Coherent means that the methodology is written well enough, the independent and dependent variables are written um, explicitly enough, and the uh, table of data is given in a way so that someone can pick this up and actually go ahead with it. 
So in terms of logical, uh, is it going to answer your problem? Coherent, does it make sense? And detailed, the detail comes from justifying the steps in the methodology and identifying factors that are going to affect your results but may not necessarily be under investigation. So the detail in the investigation is the justification of those of those decisions. <clears throat> so to show you the dot points that I mean, here is the stage two physics subject outline and what I've done is chopped out the intro pages because I don't need them. Uh, this is just the content and the um, science understanding on the left hand side. Remember everything here is open to investigation and open to examinable content and the possible contexts that it might be delivered in on this right hand side. So construct, identify and label displacement, velocity and acceleration vectors. It may or may not come out that my drone investigation would use this. However, things like uh, vector addition, trig calculations, they probably could. Explain that in the absence of air resistance, horizontal component of velocity is constant, probably not. But the fact that there is in fact um, explain qualitatively that the maximum launch angle, whatever, um, display, uh, describe and explain the effect of air resistance on the time for a projectile to reach maximum height, probably also not. However, um, when we get down into uh, talking about where have I gone? I've gone past it. Uh, when we get down to talking about aerodynamic drag, that absolutely will come into effect, uh, come into play. If I go further down through into content that we haven't gotten to yet, um, get into electric field, magnetic fields, this is actually how the brushless motors in a drone would work. If my students are therefore able to you know, bring into it something to do with, uh, where are we? Magnetic field strength. So the current flowing through a wire for a distance um, from you know um, a magnetic field will actually induce like a force a rotational force if they can identify you know increasing the current or decreasing the radial distance from one to the other will increase the torque or the energy efficiency of the drone these ideas are actually going to help um, describe or explain their findings a little bit better uh, this is all well and good, however what you can also do is head to your um, SACE webpage, so this is you know um, Plato actually, so uh, I have logged into Plato as me and I've gone through you know sample 1 AT1 assessment type 1 which is uh, the folio in the science subjects and what I've actually got is an annotated exemplar of uh, the deconstruction. So this was uh, the deconstruct and design component of this task was um, given an A, moderated and confirmed as an A. So this is an A. Uh, and what the task is about uh, sinking container ships. So I'm not sure whose task this is, but it's actually really good. It's nice and open-ended. There's lots of avenues for investigation, which means that students are able to um, hit that KA1 at a really high level, as well as all the others. So here's their mind map. And you'll note that they've gone, you know, it's a pretty simple mind map. They've broken it into eight different components, which means that they have actually done more than just, you know, a couple of ideas. They've actually gone into some detail. If you've done a mind map and you've come up with three ideas, not enough detail. Five ideas, now we're getting there. Fifteen ideas, probably too many. I try to get my students to focus on uh, four or five big ideas and then break them into smaller components, similarly here. So here's you know one big idea, the overall topic. Um, time to think whether the ship will capsize and its capacity. So here's three sub ideas and then it's broken into these eight. So here's their um, critical deconstruction. So what they've actually got is how can collisions with marine debris affect the rate of the vessel slash ship to sink. And what they've actually got is this. When, how can collisions blah blah blah. So what they've got is their brief brainstorm up here. Now they've actually critiqued it. So this is why this is an A. They've actually gone into some level of detail about what they could possibly do and why it might be useful or effective. So this is actually, you know, exactly the sort of thing that I'm looking for. You'll notice that some of the the critiquing of in the deconstruction is not quite as, uh, I don't know, 
wordy, uh, lengthy is probably a better word, um, than some of the others. However, it's all justified throughout here. So excellent deconstruction with a range of consideration leading to a clear decision of what practical to design. Significant detail, totally agree. Showing the thinking that has been communicated very well. It's, it's really good work, which is why it's been given an A. So this student has also gone through and they've actually chosen, here's my final decision. Here's the justification of what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it. They haven't just brainstormed and rolled the dice and picked one of them. They've actually made a decision about what's useful in a science classroom. So they have made it a logical design um, uh, based on their critical deconstruction. So here is their design of the investigation. <clears throat> they've got their question. They've got their hypothesis. Um, because, the, uh, sorry, they've got a justified hypothesis, there is a higher blah, blah, blah. Uh, the independent, dependent, controlled, uncontrolled variables, excellent. They've got a list of materials. They've got some safety considerations. Now they've got their method. Make sure all, surf uh, all materials are collected, use an appropriate place, etc., etc., et cetera, um, to prevent breaking. So here's what to do, and here's why to do it, okay? <coughs> So what they've gone through with and done with the method is justified the method. They haven't just gone step one, make sure all materials are collected. They've make sure all materials are collected so that in order to, um, and that level of detail means that they've actually considered what they've done far more than a student who has just, you know, step one, do this, step two, do this. Think about baking a cake, uh, you know, put in an oven at 210 degrees for 15 minutes. That's, that's great, but what if your oven's different than someone else's in burner? Or it's undercooked, put in an oven 210 degrees for 15 minutes or until golden brown on top. Or a, um, a skewer comes out clean when you poke it, okay? That little bit of extra detail means that you've put some little bit more thought into it. Uh, well planned, detailed, could be implemented without further information. That means that it's coherent, easy to follow. A draft data table would be useful. Yep, absolutely agree. However, the draft data table isn't going to change the fact that this uh, deconstruct and design deserves an A. All right, so my advice when presenting uh, this to students or when asking students to do the deconstruct and design uh, is to point out what a critical deconstruction should have in it and it should be critiquing something so breaking it down into component parts and then justifying why those component parts could be investigated how they might actually answer the problem and whether it's viable or not to do it uh, logical does it make sense will it answer your problem coherent can someone follow it is there enough detail in it to um, show that it's uh, justified in the methodology all right. Um, and the other part that I look at is critically and logically evaluates procedures and their effect on data. Uh, what would happen if you conducted more trials, less trials, used a different set of equipment, uh, calibrated something in a different way? All right. Uh, demonstrates deep and broad knowledge and understanding of a range of physics concepts or biology or chemistry or in the future psychology concepts. Um, have they actually unpacked a range of ideas from across the entire course? So that's where my, if I can find it again, this document here comes in really, really handy. I give this to students at the start of the year and when we do the deconstruction design I have all of these little bits, all of the dot points broken down into a single document and I get them to circle or highlight um, the ideas that they could possibly use as they're going through their mind map, as they're going through their brainstorm. And what I'm going to do now is pause the video really quickly while I find some past work of uh, one of my students and show off exactly what I mean. Okay, so here is an example of uh, one of my students' pieces of work. And on the right hand side, you'll notice the comments that I've made um, as I was marking this and providing feedback to the student and to, uh, I guess, the SACE board before I went away for moderation. So you can see the student has um, 
uh, unpack the scenario, they've given some sort of aim, and on the left-hand side here you can see the drone component that they might be able to change, and then the justification for the change with the relationship to some physics concepts in here, and what could possibly be done. So this student has gone through and unpacked, as you can see in my scribble over here, many avenues unpacked in lots and lots of detail, everything's from the subject outline, uh, they've actually shown um, a really high level of understanding and they've taken this brand new context and they've applied it to the subject outline by incorporating you know drag equations which aren't actually in there however um, the conceptual understanding of drag definitely is uh, we've got a student who has gone well above and beyond in terms of their selection or their brainstorm so this isn't you know a typical mind map it is exactly the same information as a mind map but it's not a mind map so here's one two three four five six seven uh, different ideas that they've unpacked and here's the level of detail following that this student has gone through and highlighted some of the factors um, that could be or can't be investigated due to circumstances and here's one possible area for investigation another type of component that can be tested finally the length of wire blah 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 so here's my um, student going through and saying I could do this but I'm not going to because of these reasons I could do this but I'm not going to because of these other reasons here's what I can do and here's what I'm going to do and here's why I'm going to do it that justification of the final decision is uh, showing that really high level understanding of the critical nature of the deconstruction. Here's what they've actually selected and here's their aim hypothesis, a justified hypothesis, some variables, some controlled variables, some uncontrolled variables and then they have their um, their methodology with a setup about how they're going to measure things. They've got some, this is because this removes the impact of gravitational forces reducing the systematic errors. So they've got some, yeah, reduces random error or systematic error. It could be controlled easily or, um, yeah, uh, make data collection easier. They've got a blank table of data for someone to, you know, fill in as they're going along. They've got a graph of expected results based on their research and understanding of the forces involved. And then they've come up and said, well, yeah, this is all well and good. However, my methodology is still limited. So this student has gone well above and beyond what I was expecting them to or what an A plus may need. However, um, using the outline that I give my students. Uh, it's really quite straightforward to produce something in this level of detail, provided students have the scientific understanding behind them. So hopefully this helps uh, students and possibly other teachers uh, when they're delivering the deconstruction design.